class. Time for class. Class is in session. Roll call. Bueller. I'm going to be late for class. Bueller. Am I hallucinating here? Just what in the hell do you think you're doing? You're late for class. You are mine now. You belong to me. Did you study for the test? No more complaining. No more Mr. Kimblet. You go to the bathroom. <laughs> Nothing. There is no bathroom. Hello and welcome to another episode of Middle Class Film Class Movie Review Edition. I'm your host for today, Joseph. I'm Peter. And I'm Tyler. This week, yeah, the Wheel of Destiny landed on my pick, Eraserhead. <laughs> <laughs> I like the high energy intro in that. Now we're on this. <laughs> 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 and yep, this is all. This all happens in the movie. Yep, yep, they're in it too. They're kind of just showing the whole, pretty much the whole movie. It's, it's fitting. Yeah. There's that guy. Oh, there he is. Iconic Eraserhead. That's the cover of the poster. I know. And the movie. Hey, it's Eraserhead. <laughs> Get it? <laughs> it's cheap, because like, his head looks like an eraser. Yeah. I don't. I don't know if that's what it's. I. <laughs> I don't think so. But that was a trailer. For yeah. te- technically, technically, it was. Yeah. It showed you things that were in the movie <laughs> that you can expect to see in the movie. Yeah, I like the idea that someone saw that trailer and goes, "Hell yeah, that's for me." <laughs> I'm. I think huh, I can't wait. I'm, I'm pretty stoked. sure David Lynch was uh, contractually obligated to make a trailer, so he was just like, "Yeah, just." Throw that shit together. I don't know. I don't care. Um, Okay, so uh, Eraserhead, directed and written by David Lynch, uh, released in 1977. It is about Henry Spencer, who's trying to survive his industrial environment, his angry girlfriend, and the unbearable screams of his newly born mutant child. (laughs) One sentence uh, synopsis. And um, I mean, you can't really, really describe this movie other than what the things that are in the movie are he is sure. in, in, in an environment that is industrial he has an angry girlfriend and there is a baby that looks like a mutant yeah you really gotta watch it man oh, there is a it is a mutant yeah um, what, what do you guys think the baby looks like i thought it looked like a bird i think it was like a horse like a horse with no no skin <laughs> like the head was like a horse with no skin on its face Hmm, I don't know. It just looked like an alien. It's got that long be- like beak, like the snout. Yeah, it is a- it birdish, it like a like an emu. Like it has a long neck. <laughs> like an emu. Yeah, so we all watched it. This was my first time watching it. This is sitting at a seven point three out of ten on really? IMDb. This is David Lynch's debut movie. Mm-hmm. It took five years to make, according really? to him. Yep, according to him, it took five years to make. He actually lived in the set at one point. <laughs> Uh, because he couldn't afford an apartment. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Pete, I think you've seen this before. I have very little memories about it. I, when I watched it the first time, I thought, everybody says David Lynch is a great filmmaker. I want to watch new movies. I'm going to watch Eraserhead. Yeah. And, oh, I, boy. and I watched it. I'm like, what the f- <laughs> fuck is this? That's usually yeah. uh, what most David Lynch movies are. <laughs> to be fair, every movie I've seen since then from him is the same thing. <laughs> But, yeah, yeah have you, Tyler, have you seen this before? Uh, I did, and in the similar vein of Pete's story, I too heard that David Lynch was a really great director, and this was like in my infancy of wanting to get more into watching movies and appreciating them. Mm-hmm. And so and you said, "Yes, this I, is it." I I liked it, uh, well, but I, I didn't <laughs> like I, I didn't like it for the same reason that oh, okay. I like it in my present time. So this is both of your second, second time. Second, view, second, yeah. second view. This is second. the first watch for me. Right. Yeah. And we've reviewed Blue Velvet and... Uh, Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Mulholland Drive. Drive. Sorry, yeah. Mulholland Drive. Uh, Mulholland. Tyler, Tyler calls it. On this, <laughs> on this very show. And so now we've gone back to the very first movie that Dave Lynch has yeah. made. Back to the beginning. So this is our third Lynch movie we're reviewing. I remember kind of liking <coughs> Mulholland Drive, Blue, Blue Velvet. Uh, I don't know. I love, I love Blue Velvet. <laughs> it's... The, each of his movies, there there is a weirdness factor, but sure. uh, you can expect that. And this is no different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> especially. Oh, especially. Yes. So let's get into some initial reactions. Pete. Okay, so second watch, invested. I'm invested. I'm here. I'm gonna I'm gonna watch this movie. I'm going to I've seen more David Lynch since then. I know what I'm expecting. Mm-hmm. 
it's it's an iconic uh, like visually visual movie. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've heard uh, all the stuff that I've heard this positive about this movie was kind of centered around the uniqueness of it and the sound design. And mm. I'm watching it and I'm thinking, okay, this is gonna be it's gonna take me places. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna really <laughs> connect with this movie, and I'm, and I'm gonna enjoy it this time. And uh, and I did not, oh. <laughs> I did, did not enjoy it. <laughs> um, I respect this movie. Okay, I don't enjoy this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to yeah. put it. I respect Razorhead, but I do not enjoy it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I got to say that the sound design is a big part of it. And we've we've talked in the past about it. You can have a bad looking movie, but if it sounds bad, if it's shrieking to your ears, mm-hmm. it, it's very quick to have an audience member like turn off that movie. Yeah. Yeah. And this this is not pleasant to my ears, but it is giving, it's putting me in a specific space, which I think is what David Lynch wants. Right. I know it's what David Lynch wants because he did like everything in this. I kind of was expecting that there's going to be more of a story that you can in- infer and interpret from this, much like Mulholland Drive. Watched it one time. I was like, that's just a bunch of nonsensical non sequiturs yeah. and, you know, a gratuitous lesbian acts on screen. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> but when we watched it for the review of this of this show, it definitely has more of a story arc to it that you have to work through and unpack in a way mm-hmm. with the racer head. I don't see any of that. It's just <laughs> kind of like some <clears throat> weird ass guy in a weird ass neighborhood, possibly on a asteroid, yeah, you know, yeah. twilight zone. You mean to tell me this whole thing takes place on an asteroid <laughs> <laughs> or a snowflake or whatever, you know, it's like, I, I feel like there's, there's so many unanswered questions and, that's exactly what David Lynch wants. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He does not want to give you a movie that's easy to sit through or watch or understand or interpret, or you can just watch and go, "Wow, what a fun movie!" You know, <laughs> no, no movie that you watch from him, you're thinking, "I'm so glad I watched that." You know, it yeah. was what a, a delight. It's it challenges you to th- to think in different ways, and yeah. and Eraserhead did that uh, in 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 uh, in a great fashion, perhaps too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. And I think that the low budget nature of it, you know, it's it looks very homespun. It looks it looks fantastic in my opinion. Yeah. Um, and the the griminess and the depressingness of of the world is feels real when you look at that baby, <laughs> the the baby, the baby, the creature as they call it in the subtitles. Yeah, <laughs> the creature. Um, yeah, when you look at the baby and you're like, it's it's oddly it's cute in a weird way. I don't like it, but I don't. I don't want, I don't wish it harm, sure. you know. Um, Hope nothing bad happens to the Yeah, baby. I, don't, I don't want anything bad. And then, you know, there's a point when he's taking the thermometer, the the, te- the, the t- uh, temperature of the yeah. baby, mm-hmm. and he turns around and goes, oh, you are sick, and it's covered <laughs> in pox, and I'm yeah. like, oh, shit. Don't touch that baby. <laughs> I know that poor, that poor th- child, that poor thing. <clears throat> that poor creature. Yeah, oh my, I know, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, uh. It affected me. That creature affected me. So mm-hmm. the production of the creature was good. And there's even some like really up close dynamite, like ultra up close shots. Yeah. Extreme like close the ups. thermometer. Like the thermometer or even more on like just the eye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can see it swiveling in the socket and it looks yeah. wet and alive. And that all, the whole production aspect of it felt like it, it was able to resonate and be affecting in a way that if you just were to take... <clears throat> I think the criticism that p- people might have of this movie w- watching it is this is just weird for the sake of being weird, mm-hmm. which it is, but it's done by a master c- creator. It's, like, it's done by somebody that is knows what he's doing and he knows how to turn those screws yeah. to in, evoke an, an emotion and feeling out of you, whether sure. that's a frustration or an anger, disgust or dread or fear or, or whatever it is. Lynch knows how to do that. And if you were to just haphazardly schlock your way through a movie like this, it would seem like a student film who's trying to be edgy. Right. And this feels like something else. And I don't know what it is, but it's almost like, I think Bruce said this a long time ago that other filmmakers try to be weird. And David Lynch does have, he doesn't have the ability to not be weird. <laughs> he, he just is weird. He just is. Yeah. Yeah. He is that that's who he is. And I a hundred percent agree with that sentiment. Yeah. He just knows how to execute it. Well, <clears throat> yeah. So that, the baby is iconic. The hair is iconic. Some of the shots with the backlighting of him, you know, standing in the, the aura, the glow of whatever's behind him is iconic. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, when, I, when I'm when i done watching it, I'm like, what do we learn here? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And I don't think anything, mm-hmm. but I felt something. So for, for that, <laughs> I, felt I felt something. I felt something inside me, which I can't c- describe. And uh, th- that in itself is a feat. 
that I, I respect. Sure. I liked that what it was doing to me, but I didn't like how I felt about it. <laughs> so yeah. it's like it's almost like a lot of layers there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's like um, if you're a spoiled brat living in the suburbs and you've never had a single care in the world, and your parents take care of everything, mm -hmm. and you go into the real world and you realize that there are struggles and there's things that are difficult to deal with in life, sure. and you, you know, at the beginning you might hate that, but yeah. eventually you realize that, that builds character, and watching. Eraserhead builds character as a movie viewer. Mm -hmm. it, it forces you to do things that you don't want to do, and at the end, you're better for it. Okay. So that's how I feel about it. Oh, I, I really <laughs> like that metaphor. <laughs> All right. Tyler, what did you think about Eraserhead? Uh, upon my second viewing, I do have a narrative that I, I believe what David Lynch was trying to tell. It's just told in a very strange way, mm -hmm. but... I think I get it. I, I, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, again, like uh, just like pigging back off what Pete said, like, you know, iconic shots. Uh, you know, this movie is a workout. Uh, the brain. <laughs> the brain workout. Yeah. Okay. Because what I really liked about this movie as well is it really made you try to understand what David Lynch was saying. And then I thought the movie looked good. For anyone who's saying it's weird for the sake of being weird, like those are the people who like don't like critically think. I I believe, um, and so I don't. I think he was trying to tell a story through a series of images, which is, I guess, what you would describe a movie. Yeah, that's, I, that is a movie. <laughs> yeah, <okay>. in fact, <laughs> a series of images comprised into twenty four frames a second. Yeah, yeah. usually um, telling a story of some sort. Yeah, I really liked the lack of dialogue as well. And he focused more on acting without acting. Is that what it's called from Curb Your Enthusiasm? Oh, like what they do in Curb? Jason Alexander, he had the pamphlet. Oh, uh, yeah. Acting without acting. Yeah, I think yeah. that's what it's called. There's a little bit of truth in that with Eraserhead. Because I feel like the dialogue is more in the acting rather than the like the words that are being spoken. And when I first watched this movie, I was just in it because I just wanted to be like, ooh, I've, I watched a David Lynch movie, man. Mm -hmm. I know what real art is. You know, just like... <laughs> it's a good drop. <laughs> um, but now I understand, like, I, I feel like I understand what he the point of the movie was. Can you tell us what that is? Oh, yeah, of course. Um, so I think... Uh, the I know what it is. Well, mm -hmm. I mean, this is just my initial reaction, so I was going to... That's gonna, okay. Well, let's put a pin I was in that gonna, for later. I let's was going to save... Uh, yeah, let's the, put a pin in that for later, then. I'm just, I'm gonna, just so curious to hear what, you're, what you think the movie is about. Because I Well, no okay, idea. so I mean, like, to summarize it, I'll get into it no, more No, 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 enjoyed it i enjoyed myself but this is not a movie i don't think i would watch anytime soon <laughs> okay okay cool um all right so this is my first time watching it so i have no prior thing to build off of no first watching mm. so this movie has a lot of things that are that was me my bad <laughs> <laughs> this, movie has a, this movie has a lot of things that are excuse me um <laughs> that are impressive about it um, and it and it being a debut for Lynch is it's pretty strong in terms of in terms of those elements, which are like the production elements and yeah, the lighting yeah. and like the design of the the baby and the set design and the weird abstract guy in a broken window apartment pulling a lever and <laughs> dropping a alien serpent child into a yeah puddle of magma. Um, yeah, <laughs> it's like there's a lot of things going for it production on a production level that are pretty strong especially for like a very indie movie made in the 70s right um it, it's just simply too weird <laughs> <laughs> it's it is just too weird for me like mm. and a lot i mean all of lynch's work is weird to some degree mm. um and there's a lot of things as he, there's a lot of things that he does in his movies that i can enjoy but the stories and how he presents them it's like it's like eating or drinking something that has just passed expiration date. <laughs> it's like, there's like a slight moldy taste 
to his movies. Slight Furman. You know, it's like it doesn't. It has like a hint of its original flavor, <laughs> but just with a with a with just a little spurt a uh, uh, splurge of mold. <laughs> I really, I you take really a, like that. You metaphor. take a hit of milk and you're like, is this spoiled or not? It's I'm like not when, sure. It's like when you finally like you go into your cupboard and you open that loaf of bread and you look on the back and it's covered in mold and it's uh, like, you're like damn it dang it eating or, it anyways you, you yeah you take the first slice not knowing the, the rest of it's covered in mold like this tastes weird yeah that's a lynch movie <laughs> oh, oh, wow moldy bread um and obviously like people it's like he is he is a specific flavor of movie and people yeah. love there are people who love lynch movies and people who adamantly hate lynch movies yeah, yeah. um yeah, there's really uh, no in between. He's kind of hit or miss for me. Uh, there, like I said, there's things to enjoy and pull from a lot of his stories. It's just like there's, there's always like an out of left field. It's like every, all his movies are out of left field. Like yeah. the whole movie is just out of left field. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> the entirety of the movie, non sequitur of the movie, is just out of nowhere. Um, and I'm like, does the is this does this taste weird or is it me who just thinks it tastes weird? Mm-hmm. You know, um, but it's a little bit of both. Honestly, okay. Well, there are there are foods that objectively are disgusting, but there's a huge po- swaths of the population that love them. Yes, Ludafisk, blue <laughs> cheese. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I defend blue cheese. God damn it. <laughs> well, see, there you go. Uh, so yeah, a razor head is pretty undeniably and unapologetically weird, mm, and sure. people love it for that. I think um, at no point did I think I knew what was going on. Um, the only thing I could pull out of this was that, like, this is David Lynch's fear of being a father. <laughs> okay. Doesn't he have children, though? He okay, does. He that. does. Uh, actually, I think he had a child before this movie was made, and that child, she was born with, like, a deformity, like a club foot. Really? Or something like that. Interesting. I'm reading in the trivia. And um, I am glad that we were segueing into why I... What? what? I'm not done yet. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm chomping at the bit. Um, but, um, but, yeah... I, yeah, I don't want to watch this again. <laughs> it's just like it's like why would I why would I go to a place that I don't like? Why would I keep going to a restaurant that serves weird food, <laughs> mm. not good food? Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe it has one good thing on the menu, but the rest of it's bad. Yeah, um, or just strange. But yeah. Um, but yeah, so not for me. Racer head. Yeah. So, so Tyler, now that you've now that we're in. General discussion. Now that you're ed- and you've, edging yourself. And you've had <laughs> all this time to have a clear, concise thought yeah. of the next thing you wanted to say. Yes. Give us your nice, clear, concise meaning of what this movie is. Um, so I actually didn't know that he had a child before the making of this movie. So now it, it's actually making a lot more sense. And so what I think this movie is about is the plight of having a premature baby as a young couple with a v- abusive family that's overbearing and with a neighbor who is pining for you. So there's this complicated nature of, okay, so I have this premature baby I have to take care of. And then like, I want to hook up with this person. And then my wife is mad at me. It's a forced marriage because the mom of the daughter said, did you have the sexual intercourse with her? Mm-hmm. Did you have sexual intercourse with her? Mm-hmm. He's like, well, I feel nervous about this question, which I really loved that exchange. And then, but what's un- the movie about? What's the movie about, though? That's what I just said. It's about it's about a complicated relationship between a man, a person that he is truly attracted to, mm-hmm. a forced marriage, and isn't it his ex girlfriend? It's his current girlfriend. I thought it was his ex girlfriend. No, the neighbor. The neighbor is not his current girlfriend. The black, ha- the black haired girl. Yeah, yeah, that's not his current. Oh, girlfriend. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about her. I'm talking the about the blonde haired, the one that birthed the thing. Yeah, I thought that um, was an ex girlfriend. I assumed that it was an ex girlfriend because she got pregnant and just stopped coming over, and then he com- comes over. He gets the message to come over and. Why haven't you been coming over lately? And then it's revealed. Yeah, they had this uh, they had hor- this creature, this horrific creature of a baby, and then like the whole. So yeah, really, it's just like a complicated relationship uh, between two people and. Uh, uh, well, what's, what, parent, but what's the guy sitting? Parenthood, in, really? Like, what's, what's the guy <laughs> sitting in the factory p- pumping pen- pencils? Covered out? in lesions or, yeah. or something. What's that about? Uh, well, I think it's that's God. 
one. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that's that's God is ca- pulling the lever. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. God I is a thinking. fuck. And like all the, all the <laughs> worms, all the and I also thought all yeah. The, what's the worm creatures? Sperm, why is he what, what, obviously? Why is he pulling it out of sperm. her out of her butt when they're in bed together? Because she cheated on him. So those things are sperm. <laughs> yeah, the giant. Oh. The they're like. They're handleable. It's a, it's a representation of sperm. Giant yeah. sperm. Like, that's what I got from it. Like, when he kept pulling them out of her. I thought it was like an umbilical cord or something. Yeah, I think that was a representation of his wife cheating on him. And so he's, like, finding out. So he's, like, pulling out the... Maybe. Thing. I mean, there's really no way to know. Do, do you guys think it, it was all took place on an asteroid? Or is this just Philadelphia? Uh, <laughs> because uh, Lynch grew up in Philly, and he yeah. said the, in that... In the rough neighborhood he grew up in, inspired the the landscape of this film. Yeah, probably. I don't. I think. I think. Uh, oh, Philly or asteroid? I, I, <laughs> no. <laughs> What's the difference? I, yeah, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I think. I think uh, Joseph is correct on uh, David Lynch do, putting out far left field things in his films that don't really make sense or contribute to the story. And I mm-hmm. think the asteroid is probably one of them. I was trying to <laughs> make sense of it. To slide though. a hand. It's misdirection. I know. Yeah. I oh, was... look at this. Look at this. Oh, the story's the story actually over here, though. <laughs> yeah. So, like, I... I... He's a magician. <laughs> God damn it, I forgot about that song. <laughs> but, um, so, yeah. So, I think, like, ultimately, this movie is just about the trials and tribulations of parenthood with the child uh, with... A physical deformity. Uh, with like, yeah, with like a physical. How de- how would you feel if you were the daughter with a club foot, and then your dad makes this movie and it's like, hey, honey, I based this weird alien creature on you. Well, it's, it's kind of fucked up. I yeah, guess so, I wouldn't so be surprised. His, I'd just his be like, daughter, <sighs> yeah, of course you. His did daughter it, Jennifer Lynch uh, was born with severely club feet, requiring extensive corrective surgery mm. as a child, and she has claimed that her own unexpected conception and birth defects were the basis. For the film's themes, not he didn't say that. He didn't say like this is about you. But we all know. But we know. I mean, I think you have to know. I think you can infer like based on like the general. I mean, it looks just like her. It's it's. (laughs) Oh god. I mean, this movie does have a lot of acclaim to it. So Terrence Malick screened the film for a potential financial backer who walked out, calling the movie calling this movie bullshit, (laughs) and then H H R Geiger. Who the hell are you showing me, Terrence? I would love it. H.R. Geiger cited this as one of the greatest films he had ever seen and said that it came... Of course he did. It came closer to realizing his vision than even his own films. According to Geiger, David Lynch declined to collaborate with him on Dune because he felt Geiger had stolen his ideas. What? Oh, wow. That's interesting. I thought Geiger was, like, dead at this point. No. I I felt like there was a lot of crossover between this and Stalker as I was watching it. Hmm. Oh, um, yeah, maybe a little bit. Just to the not necessarily the story, but the vibe of what was happening, mm. because there, uh, there's also another movie. Uh, was one of my punishments movies. It was uh, Hotel Poseidon. Oh, uh, oh yeah. Was it's uh, the the landscape of the inside of that hotel is abs- abstract like trash mm-hmm. and like random j- junk all over the place, and it felt like they took this this uh, Eraserhead universe. And blew it up into a very colorful mess in Host Help Poseidon. Mm-hmm. Um, but the whole exterior shots of him like walking through the rail yard with just trash blowing in the wind and stuff to, mm-hmm. to go to his girlfriend's parents' house. Yeah. I was like, this just looks like Stalker right before they get into the zone. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, so, a little bit. B- large brutalist buildings with like huge concrete, that huge concrete door he goes in. Yeah. Also monochromatic. Yeah, exactly. And and I I really loved uh the main the main actor. Um, Jack Nance. Jack Nance. Yeah, I think he he na- whatever they were trying to do, he nailed it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever it was, good job. Yeah, exactly. Cause, I because he looked like there's that scene right before he goes in that big concrete door. Mm-hmm. And he like looks back at the camera like a like a, a frightened animal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Um, I, I don't. I wonder how Lynch directs his actors because the performances he gets out of people. It's like what what is the verbiage? Like what is what is the language I that know. He, he uses? To be a fly on the wall to see that. To like watch him watch the um other actors, like the parents, like the, his in not his in laws, but like his soon to be in laws. Girlfriend's parents. Yeah. Yeah. Like how ha- like he like he's like he's like, Oh, look what happened to my knee. And I know. <laughs> it was just, that whole <laughs> it's I, like what? It, it just seems so 
they like, how do you say like act weird? Mm-hmm. Like act like yeah. you're the weirdest person on earth. <laughs> but that's why I like that's partly why I like David Lynch's films, or I I shouldn't I should say appreciate them because he can he can he can, he has a vision and he can just he puts it on screen like just without any shadow of a doubt. Like yeah. when you watch a David Lynch film, you know you're watching a David Lynch film, and I think that's pretty goddamn impressive. Yeah, the there's a number of the set pieces um, outside of the girlfriend's house, um, a little bit of outside of his house. They kind of, you can kind of tell that there's that the, is that the rain coming out. Yeah, it is. That's, well, it's really going. Um, you could kind of tell it looks like it's built on a soundstage, but it feels in the movie I just talked about on the Gavin Chatter episode earlier this week. Stop motion. It's oh yeah. When you're building these stop motion sets, a lot of times it's like a tabletop with a dark background, mm-hmm. and so it just kind of looks like it's existing on this tabletop. That's how a lot of the sets feel, which gives it a little bit more of a surrealistic look. Yeah. And then they go into the house. It's like they're in a dollhouse, and we're watching something, some weird story taking place within this dollhouse. Mm-hmm. And um, I I have a feeling that probably the overarching story or takeaway that Lynch wants you to feel has something to do with fatherhood or being a parent because yeah. so much of it is like that. Can't stop that. I just need a night's sleep. I know. You take care of this damn thing. And then the dad's like, oh shit, what am I, what am I gonna what am I gonna do? I yeah. know. I really like that. T- taking care of the sick baby, mm-hmm. the cry- like incessant crying. And the crying was like so it was so it was at like a perfect volume to where like it wasn't overbearing, but it was just enough to where you can imagine like you're just in bed and you hear Sure. And, and until he goes to leave the apartment and leave the baby there for a second, as soon as he opens the door, it's a uh, intense crying happens. Yeah. <laughs> intense know? crying. Yeah, I think I think in the subtitles it's called urgent crying. I uh so like going back to the when he's taken the temperature of the baby uh-huh. and the baby like I mean looks fine as fine as that baby can look um, <laughs> nice and a healthy wetness to it yeah um, <laughs> it's a nice sheen he's taking a th- he's taking the temperature and like he's looking at it and then he walks away and he looks back and then it's covered in pox or lesions or yeah. it's got infection in his mouth and lo- yeah. it looks disgusting it looks Mo- horrible more disgusting yeah um, it's having a bad time <laughs> th- that is also kind of plays into like the fear of Parenthood. Ha- parenthood and oh, for sure. Because babies get sick all the time, and it's like, you don't know what to do, especially if it's a f- your first baby. Yeah. And it's like, is this baby sick? I don't know. It does. It looks slightly paler than it did yesterday, but now it's just covered in, like, you imagine the worst thing <clears throat> you can to happen to your baby, and it's just like, yeah. it looks like it's on his deathbed. Yeah, yeah, for its sure. Its tongue is even covered in lesions. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like... It's got it, that wet, breathy cough to it. Oh, I want, like... God. Uh, like, how they... Ma- I wonder how they made... Because the baby looks... It doesn't look, like, that cheap or anything. No, it looks it, good. No, it, like no, it, it looks it's, good. It looks sentient. <laughs> it <laughs> looks alive. It looks like a wet, slimy horse face thing in a bundle. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it it's... Co- kind of a lamb. It's almost. covered in, the like, gauze or... Like, it's basically wrapped think, in, like... Yeah, a, it's, like, wrapped up tight. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the old woman, well, sorry, she's not old in the movie. She's young. Is mm. it the neighbor across the way? Yeah. Mm. She's played by Judith Roberts who plays Mary Shaw in dead silence. The old lady. Oh, oh really? what? Same old, yeah. Same old lady. Okay. Wow. Yeah. She's also in you're never really here, which we covered on the show. And that was like yeah. his, his mother, oh. it's like dementia mother. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but I thought I was like, she does look kind of familiar and she was, she was banging. Oh like, yeah. Banging. Yeah. She was banging and she was over there kind of like trying to entice him because her like blouse was halfway open yeah. every time he talked to her yeah. and i'm just like that guy you must be really long this no, guy this <laughs> eraser head <laughs> yeah you you there erase your head yeah come over <laughs> which like the end of the movie going like jumping to the end of the movie yeah like eraser head because they're making erasers out of brain matter <laughs> they're like i guess uh, yeah. I guess it's as good as any any reason. I, 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 I that was know. that was like the then it, the end of the movie where he he's an alien on the inside. I don't. I he don't was being know. piloted by a little alien like in Men in Black. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> He's just filled with a bunch of cockroaches. <laughs> yeah. I like how you're kind of like okay, I can see where this thing is going, and then all of a sudden, David Lynch. Yeah. <laughs> Here's more. And I think that's a detriment to like his style of filmmaking because. He like it, with talking to, about Eraserhead specifically, 
I could see the imagery. Like I could see I, the actors were speaking louder than their words, mm-hmm. and it was great. But then it's like all the left field stuff. It seems so unnecessary. Like he goes to he goes to a place where it's so unique, mm-hmm. and then he's he says, "Ah, well, you know what." Let's just throw this in here for the sake of artistic integrity or something like that. I'm, I'm assuming he's he's. If I could talk to David Lynch right now, he'd probably say, "Well, my movies are a painting." Well, he would. And it's just like, God damn it, no, this is a movie. I mean, he refuses to talk about. He won't elaborate. Yeah, he won't elaborate. No, I'll get him. To talk. <laughs> yeah, he'll. Yeah, he'll say, uh, "Isn't it obvious what it's about?" I'll get him to talk. Yeah. Um, so this movie came out in 1977. So there's, uh, it's got, oh, it spans um, a wide range of ratings. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I'm gonna, oh. I'm gonna read some one star. Oh, I have some. I have three one stars and three five stars pulled. Okay, I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm I gonna can't read wait to hear some it. one stars. So, uh, July 8th, 2005, <laughs> by the fan dash two, oh. 12 step program for recovering David Lynch fans. <laughs> step one. <laughs> Admitting you hated Eraserhead is the first step. Okay. Then you have to accept that Lynch is a woman hater and a phony. Hmm. Then you have to apologize to anyone to whom you ever recommended a Lynch movie. <laughs> then you must recant every bit of enthusiasm you ever expressed or felt for that execrable TV series of his or for the loathsome movie based on it. I assume he's talking about Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. Yeah. Then you have to accept with good cheer the inevitable oblivion into which Lynch and everything he ever did will drop like a stone into a bottomless well. And finally, you must resolve never to discuss, much less debate, Lynch's work with those who still pretend to respect it, understanding and accepting that the appropriate punishment for pretending to like Lynch's work is pretending to like Lynch's work. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, Actually, only six steps. I mean, that's... <laughs> That's a five star or one star? That was a one. That was, yeah, that was a five star review. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. One star. Um, this person, the emperor has no clothes. January seventh, two thousand. Mm. That's it, the whole rating. <laughs> no, it's, okay. <laughs> the emperor has An no clothes. Incoherent mass of erudite ramblings. Lynch, try, Lynch tries to convey an extremely personal experience, that of his own psyche, a dream, and fails miserably. He wallows in excess and lack and lack of focus. I was at once bored and confused by this film, which dragged on and on until I could barely tolerate it. The story is dr- only ninety minutes. The story is drowned in o- overbearing symbolism and excessive comments, which are either lost entirely to the viewer or saturate him or her with their obviousness. I couldn't tell if the laughter and squirming in the audience were because they hated as much as I, or because they thought they saw something that just isn't there. Mm. Uh, can I, can I read some half stars? Mm-hmm. Uh, half star. I don't believe anyone enjoys this movie. <laughs> is this letterbox yeah letterbox okay half star Gar- garbage or art everyone raves about this movie but it's a lot it's a hot pile of trash half star for the sound effects given the only hint of direction of this movie oh yeah there i mean five stars don't have children <laughs> five stars don't have children. five stars excuse me what the fuck <laughs> and five stars third or fourth rewatch i only realize now that this is the best most beautiful most spiritual greatest film of all time it's actually humiliating for other movies to have to keep up with this. No movie in history has ever been able to do it so far. I'm dead serious, and you know I'm right. Uh, and that person has a David Lynch uh, uh, profile picture on Letterboxd. This little, person... That's a little much. Oh, more, more recent review. 2021, John Davies-918892, da- uh, titled, A Film Perfect for Radio. Okay. <laughs> a film perfect for radio, and even then Ow. I would switch it off. Truly <laughs> awful on every level. Do not waste your time on this rubbish. Struggling to make the 150 character minimum, just like the script. <laughs> Honestly, th- th- this is actually not a good movie for radio, considering there's very little talking. I know. I was going to say, this is <laughs> the yeah. worst for radio. I think, I think that's a the- David Mamet movie might be good for radio. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people hate it. A lot of people love it. I read, yeah. I read an, a, an alternative uh, take about the um, asteroid. Mm-hmm. That it's um, the film starts with a man named Henry Spencer who's hovering in space. His brains are represented by a rocky planet visible through his head that hovers behind them. On the rocky planet's desolate surface, there's an overview of the building with a large hole in the roof, which is his hole in the building. Sitting in a window with broken glass, there's a man from the planet who pulls levers to control Henry's functions, which represent his central nervous system. Oh, so he's inside so Henry? He, so basically, like the first oh, thing okay. about him, he's, I can see, I he's can... 
He's a little alien man. Yeah. And I then, can see that. Okay. And I read an al- alternative uh, interpretation that this is an alternative uh, future where Japan has bombed the United States to oblivion and mm. has refused to do any sort of uh, rebuilding or the United States. And there's about 95% of the population is now dead. Hmm. And 20 plus years of radiation poisoning from Mary has modified her reproductive system, bringing a child into the world that has been discouraged for the past 20 years. Hmm. Huh. That's kind so- of like uh, crimes of the future in a little way. Yeah, because nearly all animal life was wiped out. Nearly all food is synthetic or genetically modified, which I like the little tiny chickens. Uh, yeah. We're having chickens. They're crazy. They're man-made. They're the size of my fist. Yeah. <laughs> I know. What is like... this movie? <laughs> <laughs> I, I do like the part where the dad just gives him, he says, you want to you carve a... You, you, you want to carve? Do you want to do the carving? Yeah, do you want to carve like, it? I, uh, can't, uh, I can't feel my hand Henry? anymore. <laughs> you want to carve it, Henry? And it's kind of a big deal. Just imagine you went to someone's house for Thanksgiving. Done. Okay, imagine that. Step one. I would. I, I, it's impossible. How, yeah. how would that ever happen? Okay, <laughs> uh, a, a new a new friend or like a new lover or something. Mm-hmm. You go to their family's house. Yeah, and you're there, and someone goes, Joseph, would you like to carve the turkey? That, they took hours to cook that meal. Yeah, yeah. hours, he's maybe pain, even days. He's painstakingly buttering each one of those tiny chickens, and he's going to trust this new guy to carve it. Yeah, and <laughs> and they kind of like you're not sure if how well they know him or whatever. But anyways, you're thinking about it, and then. You're, uh, you are sitting in that chair as Henry, and you're like, oh, fuck. Oh, God. I, think I'll, I'll, I'll pull this off. This thing is my, huge. My girlfriend's mom. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I was thinking, oh, this thing is small, and then I have this huge knife and fork. I'm, I'm and, just like, Ugh. And you're like, maybe I could do it with a full-size turkey or a chicken, but then they give you this tiny one with a full-size knife, and you're like, <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I just carve it like a normal chicken? <laughs> that, made, that made me laugh, like, big time. Uh, well, it's like squirming on the plate, too. Yeah, and then it starts... Oh, yeah, because the mom was having some weird orgasm. <laughs> yeah, there's also, like, the mom and the daughter are also convulsing yeah, the, multiple times, which is weird. I, I actually had to... Radi- radiation poisoning? I had to rewind a little bit because I didn't know if it was, like... Again. <laughs> yes, Joseph, I wanted to see it again. Up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um i was i i was i had to rewind because i didn't know like if they were having seizures it, because when the daughter has the first seizure she just gets back up and just starts talking normally like nothing happened yeah mm-hmm. and so i rewound it and then it, yeah that's what it was it's like <laughs> i was like what yeah, that really happened i was like i was like okay um it's not gonna be addressed in any sort of way all right we're just not gonna talk about this <laughs> like but, like why like Henry Henry's just wa- sitting there watching his future wife seizing up and it seems and like that's just, the least of his worries to be honest I don't know I mean I, I think, just, think if I saw any human being having a seizure I'd have a little bit of concern regardless of the relationship mm-hmm. I have with them maybe that's just normal for them because of the radiation fueled uh, environment they live in now yeah, I guess so. It, this uh, the script for this movie is only twenty two pages long. Wow! Yeah, I read I read some trivia about that, and like he was gonna get a grant from the AFI mm-hmm. to make the movie, and they're like, we can't do this. This is it's like a short film, and you want to make it a ninety minute film? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> write some more, man. Come on, <laughs> we can't do this. We can't do it. <laughs> I will say that that's that sometimes you can or you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> if you are not good at writing good dialogue, don't put a lot of dialogue in it. Just rely on the weirdness of the movie or the interesting situations that the characters are in. Every like director who comes from like uh, the eighties or the nineties, I mean, he comes from the seventies, but yeah. they always have to have a black and white debut. We have David Lynch. We have Christopher Nolan. We have Aronofsky. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe uh, that's not his debut. Denise, uh, Denise, uh, Polytechnique. Mm. That's not his debut though. No, uh, but it is an early Did movie. Spielberg have one. No, Spielberg's first movie was duel. Yeah. Okay. Which, Which is, I was going to stream and pick because I, I just picked it up on 4K, but it's not streaming anywhere. For free. Yeah. It was actually really good. But yeah, yeah, I would yeah, like this this movie and Pi are of the same. Oh yeah, Pi. Genre, not genre, but like the feeling, yeah. <laughs> same vibe. Yeah. yeah, I guess Pi is a little bit more comprehensible. Yeah, Pi is a little bit more coherent than the Eraserhead. But it's like they had the same amount of money. It feels like. Yeah. Um. Uh. This crew for this movie was very small. David Lynch did a lot of stuff. He had a sound designer, Alan Split. He had two cinematographers because the first one died wow. during production. Yikes. And w- <laughs> within the five years that he was filming it. He saw the creature and he just croaked. And then production manager and prop technician Doreen Small and Catherine Coulson, who worked in a variety of roles. So it's like everybody was doing 
a bunch of different stuff. Sure. Much like you do in a, is it a low budget movie. Yeah. Um, but the fact that his cinematographer died that sucks <laughs> during the production of this is kind of crazy. Yeah, that is. That would be sad. I thought it was also They're interesting. Probably friends. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's sad. <laughs> they must have been friends. I uh, the, His first actual short was 10 years before this. He's, his first one was 1967. Yeah. And then he made this. This was his first feature. And he's got a shitload of shorts. In yeah. His, in his, mm-hmm. A ton of shorts. Mm-hmm. Um, most recently, the one that I saw was on Netflix. Was what did Jack do with the monkey? Yeah, with the did. monkey. <laughs> God, so that, weird. Voiced by Lynch. Yeah. And as much as I may not connect with Lynch's stuff, I'm so glad he exists. I'm so yeah. I'm so glad his stuff is there. Cause, and him as a person seems like a very a very fun in maybe not fun, but a very unique and oddly wholesome um, person. When you look at David Lynch, mm-hmm. he's got this very unique hairstyle. It's like similar to a racer head. Hair goals for me, to be honest. Um, he's got mm, luscious yeah. locks. He's a silver fox. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. He's not been nominated for four Oscars. And really? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Either writer or director. Um, but when you look at him, we all know what he sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> yes, we do. But when you look at him, before I knew what he sounded like, it did not... You were surprised. I was surprised that that is what actually what he sounded like. <laughs> because he looks like such a masculine sort of kind of guy with, mm. who would have like a gruff voice. He was nominated for Best Director at Mulholland Drive, Best Director for Blue Velvet, Best Director for Elephant Man, and mm. Best Writing Adapted Screenplay screenplay for also Elephant Man. Yeah. So director three times. Is and it, he won a, in 2020, he won an honorary Oscar. Mm. For, for what? For what? Who knows? Who knows? My name is David Lynch. Well... <laughs> Well, <laughs> that's going on the board. All right, so here, here's da- David Lynch. Uh, here's a uh, David Lynch. Of, yeah, you're pretty funny sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> He's sober today, that's why. <laughs> All right, here's a David Lynch uh, motivational uh, little bit. Motivational? No. <laughs> or to a painting or to whatever. And um, figure out a way to get it done. That's what he says. Wow. Yeah, that's, get it done. That, that's just the, that's, Which is the message for great young filmmakers everywhere. Jim Cummings is another uh, mm. filmmaker who I really love, and I follow him on Twitter. Mm. And it, constantly he's like, just make the movie. Just do it. Get with your friends. Make the movie. Don't, stop talking about it. Just make the movie. Yeah. <clears throat> I think that could apply in, in a lot of ways. But I mean, all the stuff that I've seen of David Lynch in his personal life, like when he was... He was um, Lobbying for Lord Dern to get an Oscar nominated nomination for Wild at Heart. What, I think it was either Wild at Heart or or Blue Velvet. Uh, uh, she in Blue Velvet? Pretty sure. Yeah, she's. I think Lord she's the girl Dern he's dancing. I think she's the one dan- he's dancing with. Uh, what's his name? Right. I don't. Uh, know. I can't recall, but I think it is Wild at Heart. But he was. He was. I love Wild at Heart. He was petitioning Heart. for her, and so he like sat outside the like the offices of the Academy with the sign that said, you know, nominate Lord Dern. And he had a cow in it sitting next to him. Oh, God. And he's just, he's just a unique soul that I think is very pure in his own way. Yeah, and, and yeah. I, and I'm so happy. I'm so happy his stuff exists and he exists. Yeah, he wasn't, she well. wasn't Blue Velvet. Yeah, because could she was Her like character the, the girlfriend. Sandy Williams. Mm-hmm. Oh. But yeah, at the end of the movie, he's he, his head comes off and there's an alien inside. The little baby. I thought it was the same baby. I thought it was the baby or something. Oh, maybe. I, don't know. I did. I thought that I was... I thought it was like, oh, he's actually been an alien. That's I, why that baby looks like that. I oh, thought okay, it was yeah. so <laughs> comedic. I, that sequence of events made me laugh so hard. The kid brings the head. Like he just picks <laughs> it up and like the old man is like, hey, wait a minute. What do you got there? <laughs> I, I was going to get that. And then <laughs> the kid takes it and brings it to uh i don't know whoever the, the guy who's making the erasers yeah oh yeah that's right. <laughs> i didn't i didn't ca- i didn't catch on to that i was just laughing so much about like the idea of, well you like, see him this... erasing the thing oh well, like he like there's a line of pencils mm-hmm. that are going through like a uh like a machine oh. and then the erasers are being put on and oh he, that's what it was and i then thought he, it was something and, else and then he erases he like tests it out on the piece of paper and he's like yeah. good good yeah, go. it looks good I didn't. I didn't pay. I didn't pay attention to that part. I th- I just thought they called the movie Eraser Head because his head looked like an eraser. I don't think it does look like an eraser. It looks like Kramer. <laughs> no, because you know, Kramer it's like his, full power. His head is like has like a kind of square sort of 
look to his it. Hair and then his hair is tall, no. like a pink eraser. I guess I don't know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I thought that was no. okay. Well, yeah, I know you've explained it to me <laughs> very much. Chatbot is uh, vehemently opposed to yeah, that. I know, I know. <laughs> me and Chatbot, uh, we we need to have words. Wait, that, <laughs> so why is it called Eraserhead, Lynch? Somebody. No. <laughs> Figure it out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, about eraser head. Well, it you really need his just head to looks get, like an eraser. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever seen a number two pencil, you got to look at the the shape of the pencil. Oh my god! <laughs> and then he just Why goes off on movie? a then he goes off on a tangent on number two pencils, and just does not mention the movie whatsoever. I, um, I like the part where he's uh, there. There's like a front desk clerk, and he keeps he keeps buzzing the front desk or something. And the guy comes. Yeah, out. Yeah. That's before. That's with the yeah. severed head. Yeah, the guy comes yeah. out and he's like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, yeah I, I can't remember exactly what he said, but it's, his energy was uh, very appreciated by me. Yeah, he like yeah. he just like storms out. He's like, "What, Paul?" I think his yeah, name was Paul. Like, like, and then he realizes, "Oh wow, Paul, re- Paul, huh? Paul, Paul, <laughs> Paulie." No, not Polly. No, Paul, Ma- Paul Mahadeep. Mahadeep. He's a real. He's a real. He's a real. Asshole. I mean, one day I just want to. I just want to meet someone named Polly and be like, "Hey, Polly." Um, and then they're just gonna okay. be, give me a, a good smack in the face for being a little racist. Racist? Why? Why is that racist? Well, I just, I just did a a, a horrible impression of an Italian person. Italians are white people. Yeah. What? Yeah, oh, yeah, but they're, they're <laughs> not according to the clan. They're not. <laughs> <laughs> Half of Tyler's friends don't think they are. <laughs> my, uh, my notes in this movie are so all over the place too. Yeah, I didn't even bother. I was like, this bitch is g- again. Now she's singing. Get the fuck out of here with these cheeks. <laughs> Get out of them with them. I cheeks. hated her. The little tiny singing yeah. dancing person in the lived in the radiator. She yeah. had like the jowls. Yeah, yeah. she had the like jowl the things. Ball cheeks. Yeah, yeah. it looked like she looked like a hamster full of treats. Yeah, like uh, a chipmunk. Well, chipmunk. Yeah, yeah, a chipmunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I didn't understand because it ends with her, like them together, right? Isn't it? No, it ends, I think it ends with her. Just somebody. Like, She's in. Man. He's in heaven now. He got his yeah. head knocked off. I guess. Off. Uh, yeah. yeah his head know. knocked off. I didn't really like his that head part fell either. <laughs> <laughs> My head, Elaine. <laughs> I uh, I noticed that I've seen the little the pile of dirt he has on his nightstand with just twigs in it. Yeah, I thought uh, that was. I, I've seen that before somewhere. Like uh, like someone had recreated that, which uh-huh. would be very easy to do. Oh yeah. And, you just and speaking, get a shovel and some twigs. <laughs> and speaking of which, uh, uh, Bruce has a great painting he made of the baby. Oh, really? uh, from this, he Bruce, oh. Bruce, Bruce is a big fan. He said, "I'm going to bust out my Criterion disc of this to watch it for the show." Awesome, yeah, awesome. So, Bruce, write us in, or maybe you can come on next episode and chat it up with uh, Eraser's head with us for a little while. We, yeah, probably should have had you on and say, t- say your piece because I know you're a, uh, a big Lynch fan. Yeah, I would, oh, okay. I would like to hear his opinion. Yeah, I want to, I want to hear it from uh, from a seasoned veteran. Yeah, Let uh, I want to know who someone who likes the movie. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know anybody who likes the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Although I haven't really talked to many people who have seen the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. One fun review that I read about this, mm-hmm. speaking of knowing people that have seen Eraserhead, mm-hmm. it was, I said, five stars. My love language, forcing you to watch Eraserhead. Oh, wow. God. <laughs> this Great. is a good, good way to not get a second date. For, you... Yeah. First date movie. <laughs> if yeah. you're not liking how it's going so far. Yeah, but the other person seems like they are having a good time. I, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tricks, jokes on you. I love David Lynch. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Grades. Pete, what do you grade? Your eraser head. You have been erased. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, God, what do I grade eraser head? On what scale? Yeah, what scale do we have? I mean, dude, I like the movie. Um, yeah, I liked it. Did I enjoy it? No, I did not. But I respect the shit out of this movie. I'm going to give it an A minus. For as much as I didn't outright enjoy the movie, it's hard to argue that it's not a good movie. And it's hard to argue that it's not the movie that he wanted to make. Sure. So, you know. Is it hard to argue that it's a good movie? Or it's not a good movie? It's just different than a movie. It's not like, it's not like... It's not like you're making, you know, a straight ahead narrative or a rom-com or a sci-fi A to B movie. It's just, it's like a stream of consciousness 
Lynch pulled it out of his weird ass brain and put it onto camera for us in the most succinct way that he knows how in the best mm-hmm. way that he, he knows how. And it was delivered in a really fantastic way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think it's, I think it's a great movie that I don't like. <laughs> yeah. So, I, I, yeah. so maybe, maybe personal I, enjoyment on it, B minus, but as far as the quality of the movie and uh, for like the staying power and the history of the movie, A minus. So, all right, let's call it a, let's call it B right in the middle. Call it a B. B. <laughs> okay. And uh, I, I, but I do got to say that Henry, the character of Henry, is, was cast perfectly. He does a great job of emoting yes. uh, a look of concern. Not looking. A look of concern. <laughs> He's, he, he looks concerned and unsure and fearful at all times. That's just him being scared on being on set. Yeah, because he's he, yeah, because Lynch is piercing into his soul with his eyes. So. Yeah. but yeah, I, I'll give it a B. Yeah, B B for uh, Erase Red. Okay, Tyler. Uh, yeah, same B. I think uh, this movie, although it doesn't have a whole lot of, I think it has a two watch limit for people who want to get into David Lynch's category, uh, category, category, catalog. Catalog. Okay. I don't know why I couldn't think of that word. Okay. Catalog. Yeah, that's a word. Um, <laughs> if you want, if you're if you're interested in David Lynch's movies and you haven't seen it, I personally would recommend watching it once. Sleep on it for, well, I didn't watch it in for years. For, for years, like just forget about it, and then eventually <laughs> it'll hit you in the head. I am gonna check out Eraserhead again. Why not? It's a, it's a dark rainy day. Why not? And then make your own judgment for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then never watch it again. <laughs> because <laughs> it's always going to stick in your mind. Yeah. It's always going to stick in your mind. And it'll and never make any more sense the more times you watch it. Yeah, no. It'll never make any more sense. But, yeah, so I think there's a two-term uh, watchability <laughs> for Eraserhead. That's funny. Uh, but it's uh it's a solid b for me and i'm really glad like pete said that we have people like david lynch existing in our cold harsh world yeah Mm -hmm. bringing weirdness to our human consciousness all right i will give this movie a d oh (laughs) baby i'll give this movie a d because hayden For David Lynch. I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that. No, you didn't. (laughs) Yes, I did. (laughs) And of the David Lynch movies that I have seen, this is the worst one. Really? Um, Just out of enjoyment. Okay. Hot take. Is it? Um, (laughs) This is a movie that I think that you... It's a D. For people who like it, there are people who like it and there are people who don't like it. And you cannot convince either one of those people to, to change their opinion. Sure. If you like this movie, yeah. you like will like it for the rest of your life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you don't like it, which I don't, you, you can't convince me to like it. There's nothing. There's, <laughs> there's nothing. nothing but, what about, but what about the production? That's not enough. It's not enough. Not, that, I'm not gonna watch a uh, that, that saves it from being an F. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, David Lynch is so sad right now. I'm sure he is. He could like. Yeah, he's gutted. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> A single tear is coming down his We gotta eye right get him now. on the show. <laughs> yeah. He's like with his partner, David, what's wrong? And he's like, I don't know, I just sense something. It's just like a, it's a it's a pointless discussion to try mm. and like or debate, I guess, if you were to try to like try I to think this movie is good. Out. I think this movie is bad. Tell me why it's good and maybe I'll think that. So. You can't yeah. It's not it's his genre of movie is that it's you like it or you hate it. Um <laughs> and it's in his movies. His catalog of movies that I've seen is like hit or miss for me. Blue Velvet didn't really do much for me. I mean, everyone's insane. I love Blue everyone's, Velvet. Everyone's yeah. insane in every in every movie of this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and maybe there's one like character who is of reality, or, like the the straight character. Yeah. The, the one who is um like That's in a, a Twilight way. Zone episode. Yeah. Um it's a good way. To what, put it. One person's normal and everybody's different. They're all the same. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> There's no stand-in for the audience. Yeah. Uh, David, but yeah. David, if you ask David Lynch, he would say the baby is the stand-in for the audience. <laughs> yeah. There's nothing drawing me back. That's the straight man. There's nothing drawing me back to this movie because cool. So we'll, we'll revisit it in five years. It's mm-hmm. uh it's a sh- it is a short movie, but it feels long. Um, and it's just kind of droning, and mm-hmm. just stuff is happening. Just he's like pulling the rug out of you uh, from underneath you, like. Every all the time, just when you think you figured it out, 
He's yeah. like, nope. <sighs> yeah. We're going this way now. I completely agree. We're going with this that way statement. now. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's just it didn't uh, didn't work for me this one. Yeah. So that's fair. It's uh, it's a not, D. Not it's good. A D. <laughs> not good. All right. All right. Let's move on. Uh, racer has off the wheel. Yeah. And now it's time for the wheel. One wheel, eight slots, three hosts. This is the Wheel of Destiny. All right. Okay, racer heads off the wheel, Joseph. And uh, what are you going to replace it with? So I had an idea of what I wanted to replace it with, mm. and I still really want to do it. Okay. But after watch, like after watching Dune, Part Two, you know, finishing that story, David Lynch has his own Dune movie. Oh God, please no! But I, it just seems so apt and timely to do it. Uh -huh. But also, I want to spite Tyler. Okay. What? Okay. Why? So we're going so we're gonna watch Oppenheimer. <laughs> All right. Eventually. Not uh, next week. Oppenheimer. Uh, one day. God damn it. All right. Okay. One day. All right. Within the next... You're going to make me watch this movie that was nominated for 11 Oscars? What an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome I'm to a... Ultra Hell. Uh, what can I say? Bro? I'm a complicated sociopath. I guess. You're a contrarian. <clears throat> no, I'm not a contrarian for the sake of being a That's contrarian. That's good contrarian right now. Literally what he just said is contrarian. <laughs> Can't win. I, I don't want. I don't win. want to watch Oppenheimer because everybody likes it. I never said that. That's what you did. He said he quoted it. I have you. I quote. You have you on tape. On tape. <laughs> Video cassette. Yeah. <laughs> Hot, Wait super a minute, eight. Really? Super eight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let's recap the wheel for uh, new listeners or new viewers. We have the actual wheel here. Eight slots, as the theme song says. Three hosts. Three hosts. Two slots for each of us, and two for the Patreon. So we have Oppenheimer from Joseph, Lahane from Joseph, which neither of those will be chosen for next week. Nope. Because Joseph had two movies in a row. Last week was what? City of God? Yes. Yeah, City of God. City of God, then uh, Racerhead, back to back. Um, then we also have Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves from Patreon, Linda. Mm. Blackberry from Patreon, ha Javier. Hard Ticket to Hawaii from Pete. Abominable Dr. Fibes from Pete. Mr. and Mrs. Smith from Tyler. And American History X from Tyler. Mm. So we're going to give this a spin. Mm. And it's going to be what we watch next week. This is live. Well, not live, live, but live to tape. Nope. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Oh, it landed on mine. But, uh, whatever, from whatever. my point of view, it landed on mine. Yes. <laughs> Why not? It's right there. Yours, yours can't get picked anyways. I know. All Apparently right. mine can either. Nope. <laughs> nope, 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 nope. Early on in the run, man, I had a, a, a cold streak where I was like 12 episodes straight where I didn't have one of my yeah. movies picked. I was like, it's a little depressing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I feel your pain. Because I have I have, a, I have a dynamite replacement on the wheel for when my movie gets picked. Yeah. Um, all right. Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. This is Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Kevin Prince. Costner. Yep. Kevin Brian Costner. Adams. 1991. The duo of the century. With um, also <laughs> Morgan Freeman playing the uh, the Muslim, his Muslim friend. Oh. They had Muslims? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was he was overseas when he's found. <laughs> they, had they had Muslims back then. Yeah. <laughs> I thought Robin Hood was a fantasy. No, this is a historical document. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, he hung out with Jesus and everything. Oh. <laughs> uh, you cannot rent this anywhere, or, or you can't stream this anywhere. You have to rent it. Oh, okay. Oh. So a four dollar rental, just about everywhere. Uh, Voodoo is three though. Um, or you can you guys can huddle around the CRT and we can watch it on VHS together. Because this is one of the most prolific VHS movies of all time. Mm. Yeah, I've seen this movie a, a, a couple of times on VHS Everyone when I was in, a young one. I've never seen this movie. Everyone and their mom and Tyler's mom had this movie on VHS. Why do you have to go out and <laughs> call My mom didn't. You just said so. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. You're right. <laughs> My mom had a Titanic on VHS. See, that's for the contrarian in you. You're just like, the second I say your mom, you get angry. <laughs> I could say, Tyler's mom is a wonderful person. He goes, hey! <laughs> no, she's not. No, she, no she's not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so, yes, yeah, so we're going to watch that as a, it was a pick from Linda. We will get her a message from her or maybe have her call into the show. Well, that would be nice. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. And she had, she had like an, an old school because she had Dead Again was one of her picks. Um, what was the other one? It was the Humphrey Bogart movie where he plays the villain. Oh, In a Lonely Place. In a Lonely Place, yeah. Um, it was another pick, but this time she took more of a contemporary movie. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I don't remember why, but I'll, I'll read the message and maybe get her on. Uh, anything else you guys got? Huh? That's it. Uh.
No. All right. So thank you to our cool ass yard duties over on Patreon. That's Javier, Heather Sachs, Ryan Corbett, and Chris. And if you want to support the Patreon, hit us up at patreon.com slash middle class film class. But if you don't want to pay for the support, watching us on YouTube or leaving us a five star rating is just the same. In the show notes has all the links that we have to find us on the socials and the YouTube and the Twitch and all that good stuff. So until next time. Thank you for joining us as we review Eraserhead, a D movie from Joseph. (laughs) Follow us next week as we review Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, a uh, mom movie classic from 1991. We've got plenty of dad movies. Now here's time for a mom movie. That's right. Oh, yeah. Uh, Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash mcfcpodcast, and send us an email, mcfcpodcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and follow us on Instagram at middle class film class and leave us a voicemail. Why don't you at two zero nine seven three zero six zero one zero and follow us on Twitter at podcast MCFC on TikTok at middle class film class. There it is. We'll see you next time. See ya. See ya. Class dismissed. I gotta get out of here. The bell doesn't dismiss you. I dismiss you. You are free to go. See you next week. See you later. See you later. That's a wrap. Great show.